we need to specify the following queries based on the database schema shown in this figure using the operations of relational algebra. These operations can be found in the videos or in the notes, and those are in the description below the like button. So first thing, first question is saying list the departments. And this is the department name and department number that we want to list that have a location in San Diego. So what we're going to need is our department and department locations, because those are the two things that we're dealing with. So let's get the department location first. We're going to store it in location underscore San Diego. We want to filter through this. So we're going to say that we want our D location, which is what this part is right here, to equal San Diego. Once it equals this, and this is for our department location, this is the entity that it's looking at the table, we are going to store these inside of location San Diego. So we're going to store all the locations, all of the department numbers inside of here. And then we are filtering out all the departments that are from here. Now we want to get the actual department number in from inside of here. So we are going to store inside of department San Diego. We're going to do the location of San Diego times the department. So we are basically just putting these two together. And then we're going to store into the result the filter of our D name and D number. So we're going to get the department name and department number of our department San Diego. And department San Diego stems from the location San Diego. And then it's going to get the attributes of department by this multiplying it by right here. So that's it for the first one. For number two, there is a slight issue that I just encountered. So when it says to list the names of the employees, well, we don't really need the social security numbers. So we can totally remove these. All we want is to compare the first name and the last names. So we can easily just do this in one line. So into result, we want to have this intersection and we don't need to compare the first name and last name of our dependents. What we need to do is filter out the first name only for our all employees. Once we filter out the first name and compare it to our dependents, because it's just saying the dependent name is the first name of the dependent. So we filter them all out here. We get them all the tuples and we compare them to here. And then from this, we're gonna to want to filter out the first name, last name for the result that we have here. And that is the correct way how we would do this part of our problem. Next, we want to retrieve the names of employees, last name, and first name in department 15 who work more than 11 hours per week on the SAC CT project. So SAC CT is a required name. So let's first get this. When we're looking at our project, it needs to be the SAC CT project. So we're gonna pass in our project here. We're gonna wanna make sure our name is our SAC CT and then we'll just store that in the SAC CT project. So that's going to give us the name here. Next, we want to make sure that our hours is greater than 11 for those who work on this. So let's just store the hours part. We'll store in 11 hours, we're gonna get the element works on and we're gonna check whatever is greater than 11. From this into the 11 hour stack, we are going to store the previous two and we are going to join the project number. So we want to make sure it's the same thing and then we can join this information together. Next, we want to make sure that we're in the correct department. So we're going to be filtering out all of those that are in department 15 we're going to place it in department 15. Next, we have the 11 hour SAC department 15, where we are just going to combine these two together and make sure that they are in the correct department number because the 11 hour SAC part is going to come from the project and works on. And so it's going to stem up here. And then the department number itself needs to see, we need to see what department it is for department 15. So that's all going to get stored in here. So now we're here. And then after this, we want to get all the information for our employee. So we have to join these two together once again, pass in the employee here, send it to all, and then we're just going to get the first name and last name for all of this information. Next, in part four, we find the names of the employees, last name and first name, that are directly supervised by Anna Hunter. So all we're going to do here is we are going to pass in the first name Anna Hunter into the first name and last name. Once we do this, after we find her inside of here, we need to filter out her social security number so we get that. And then for our employees, we want to compare the super social security number with Anna's social security number. Once we do this, we're gonna store all of those inside of here. 
and then we're just going to get the last name and first name of these people and pass them into result and save that there.